essentially there are two aspects of that the bonsai pot needs to cater for one or the most important part of it is the hot, its horticultural needs and that is determined by the volume of of the soil that the pot can hold how big the pot you need depends on one the size of the tree and the voracity or how much of water the tree can use so ideally the amount of water that the pot can hold uh, or the tree can use from the pot should be just what it needs for a day the more difficult part uh, of getting right is the aesthetic part the bonsai pot should not overpower the picture so it's not the dress that you're looking at or it's not the pot that you're looking at it's the bonsai that you're looking at the the pots there are oval pots there are rectangular pots there are square pots there are round pots well hexagonal and oct- octagonal and then there's the lotus shape and the floral shape the lotus shape and the floral or the japanese mirror shape are quite extravagant pots with the shape of the pot you have the depth of the pot uh, the depth of the pot is quite uh, crucial because a shallow pot can make your tree look quite tall uh, a deep pot can on the other hand make the tree look much more squatter so if you want to have a tall delicate looking tree then you'd use a very thin narrow pot on the other hand you have a, a strong masculine looking tree that needs to show that it is well established in the ground you'd use a deeper pot if you have a tree that is up in the mountain or growing by the river side you need a, a shallower pot but one which kind of accentuates the that the tree is leaning off onto one side so you use what's called we call, call a semi cascade pot but the pots are not too deep but they're deep enough to lift the tree off the f- from the ground you then have cascade pots which are quite tall pots compared to the width of the pot so the the pot is usually twice as wide as or twice as tall or maybe even two and a half times as tall as the width of the the pot then you have trays trays are used um, in compositions uh, roots over rocks uh, little landscapes uh, you have slabs uh, slabs are again used for larger compositions to go along with the the shape and the depth of the pot you have decorations on the pot often you'd use te- textures on on the pot uh, the textures generally emulate the bark of the tree or if the fruits are quite unique uh, and got spikes and other characteristics on it then texture sometimes helps with on the pot the the lips on the outside of the pot tends to make the the top of the pot much wider than the bottom of the pot if you want a more sturdy looking pot or more masculine looking pot usually the lip is hid, hidden on the inside of the of the pot the lips could be uh, textured or uh, could be heavily carved out or shaped glaze pots are the more colorful ones with the brighter colors and more vibrant uh, textures on on them and they generally used with flowering and fruiting uh, trees on the other hand you have uh, unglazed pots which are very earthy colors and you have um, earthen browns earthen reds so even grays now earthen pots uh, or unglazed pots are normally used for evergreen trees um because the the green and brown goes naturally together short sturdy feet ground the pot quite low into the to the surface and makes the tree look makes the pot look very much grounded stronger and so they used more for masculine uh, trees tall delicate uh, feeted pots on the other hand uh for more flowery trees for more decorative trees for more trees that are more feminine if you have stepped feet which well a cross between the sturdy feet and the tall feet you then have what do we call the cloud feet the cloud feet signify that the pot or the tree is up in in a in a mountain range uh, so it helps bring our imagination towards that area Uh, we have recessed feet very much like the short sturdy feet the recessed feet uh, you can't see them at from the surface of the from the end of the pot they're quite deep into the pot uh, then you have flush feet where the where the feet is in line with the surface of the pot it's not recessed at all uh, when you have the feet uh, in line with the surface of the pot it helps raise the pot uh, and it gives a quite a smart finish to the pot itself you can't have a pot without a feet because it doesn't allow the free passage of water underneath the pot so all pots should have for horticultural reasons should have uh, feet 